Right everybody, welcome back to a brand new lesson. Today we're joined by Adrian on the channel. If you haven't already, do check out the other iron and driver tips that he's put out there for us. And today we're gonna to be looking at three chipping tips for you, what we need to be doing when chipping. So let's get stuck into this lesson now and find out what they are. Guys, if you are new to the channel though, do remember to hit the subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future golf lessons to help you improve your golf. So chipping here, we've got three balls, one per tip. Let's dive in straight with the first tip. One thing that you can give the viewers here at home to help us hit some better chip shots. What would they be? Well, one of the key things I find is people's understanding of where the handle is at address. If you can control the location of the handle and address, you can then got a good chance of controlling it at impact, okay. which is obviously going to produce the desired result you want. Okay. So one thing I'd see from a lot of people is they get the handle really far forwards when trying to hit the golf ball nice and high. Is that a a good thing is that what we want to be doing or is not that really that try and stop that's obviously going to de-loft it and so on and people are told you know get your hands ahead get your weight forward and so on yeah. but the grip then creeps around and this will shut the face so there's a whole host of issues then okay. that happen and then they'll try and add loft drawing the swing and, lead, and, and like back up and more. duff it yeah so if we were trying to hit just like say the high soft little pitch here that we've got we've got about 40 feet to the flag how would we go about doing that well for the high one i've just put a little t-peg in the end here just to highlight where the handle is okay. so with this shot we obviously want some loft on it okay. and to put loft on it we certainly don't want to de-loft it and put the, the handle ahead here okay. i have i use this little magnetic tool from a hardware shop obviously you can see here if i handle ahead that's de-lofting it yeah. if i pull the handle back that's going to put the true loft on it and I can even then open the face and increase the loft okay. and use the bounce a little bit there as well. So that gives us an insight straight away to where the handle was. As soon as you moved it back, it added some loft on and got the, the face looking up. So exactly. the handle's more neutral when we're trying to hit the high soft shot, would you say? Yeah, in real simple terms, you can predetermine the loft you want to impact to address. So you've already done half the work before you start. So if I arrange the shaft more neutral, let's call it with the t -pen looking at me here yeah into my stomach I'm going to lower the handle a little bit because I've opened the face and from here that's going to return that club back more neutral so straight away I've got more like maximum loft on that club head Perfect. let's let's see you uh, let's just see a demonstration of that one there then let's chip one off for us okay so ball position as well fairly central or a hair forward for this higher one and I'm literally just going to kiss the turf that's the idea and let the loft of the club and my setup do the rest. Nice, just picked off there and pretty soft stopping there on the green. Yep. Lovely, lovely shot, nice and high. So, other side of the spectrum, how do we get the low one? We're going to stick it forward, I presume. Exactly, and some players might prefer, like Shane Lowry, to use one club and just change the angles. Others, you may want to use a, a stronger wedge and so on. But in simple terms, again, as I said, if you change the handle location, Lean it forward a little bit, keep the face squarer or stronger. Yeah. I'm going to get a little closer, more upright. That allows me to swing the club back a little straighter back and through okay. here. And then if I return this club back to here at impact, I'm presenting the loft. Away, such a such a different amount of loft on the face and that neutral neutral shaft lean there, just with that handle lean, such a simple thing to do, isn't it? Exactly. So just predetermine the loft you want and basically keep those angles the same. If you can keep them nice and quiet, the loft of the club's gonna do the rest of the work for you. Let's see it then. All Let's the give it a go. Good. Let's see that you've got the uh... The ball's a little further back here as well. My weight's a touch further forwards. Beautiful and a totally different one there, just running out nicely to the flag. A great little shot there, fantastic. So let's uh, let's talk about duffing chips. I'm someone who duffs the ball all the time. What advice are you going to give me for that one? Well, this is where we get the opposite fact, spectrum. Could we, could we combine two things in one here? I, I would imagine tip one and well, tip two and tip three very much lead into the same thing here do they? Indeed yeah one of the biggest things obviously is everybody wants to try and add loft or help the ball up in the air yeah. you might want to try and get under it and yeah. so on but it is important you keep some structure through impact and when I say structure you keep this left arm or the lead arm dominant here to keep this radius the same yeah. if I shorten this radius if I bend my left wrist or pull, pull, pull my elbow up 
That's, I'm not going to hit the floor, I'm going to hit the ball on the side, scull it across the green and so on. Not what we want. Exactly, so that's ba basically people trying to scoop it, lift it, they get overactive with their yeah. trail hand here. So, so in setup, if we combine the two things, what two things could we do to stop this? Well one real simple thing is first start with the grip. It's an old fashioned tip, this Seve and Henry Cotton, I'd call it a double overlap. Okay, Whereas so instead of, if you're not interlocking or overlapping, you just literally two fingers, double over that, I lap them here yeah. over that straight away that pacifies the trail hand okay. and it gives the lead arm and the lead hand much more dominance okay. so you get the feel it's almost like you're hitting this one-handed with a little bit of support from your trail hand okay, but so it stops stop that old stops the old scoopy flicky one that's the first thing and then the second thing would you say that a lot of people in trying to you know get the ball up in the air hit the phil mickelson type flop they get the nice big wide open stance and chopping across the golf ball as well exactly a lot of people people fall foul you know they're told oh you need to stand open with a chip and so on mm. but they get overly open so they'll start to really rotate round like so so you'll see their feet get wide open here yeah. and unfortunately this forces the club out and across the so the angle of attack comes too steep they might unfortunately get the old woohoo the dreaded s word and they start to chop across it because they've really got too open too much to it. so for such a small shot we only really almost need to get it a bit like a putter action get it more back into back into into the ball and doing that so let's uh let's finish this off now with a nice little chip to to the flag here we've got the double overlap yep so i'm going to hold down stance. double overlap i'm only going to open my stance of hair so only pull that left toe back two or three inches max so i'm not getting ridiculously open here because that starts all sorts of funky actions in the swing so Square the face, double overlap, only slightly open with the stance. Lead Feel this lead arm is nice and dominant. Beautiful. And there you have it. Turf again. And a fantastic little chip there. So three great little tips there. If you're someone who's really struggling with your chipping at the moment, it could be because of where your handle's being placed at a dress, causing you to try and get the wrong idea for how you're trying to hit the shots. Also, what you're doing in your setup revolving around the grip and the actual alignment of the body. Run through those three T tips there, guys. See that they're gonna start actually getting you to chip the ball better. Give them a try down at the practice range or on the practice tee. Guys, thanks for watching this lesson this week. If you have enjoyed it, do hit the like button down below. Also, do remember to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future lessons, and we'll see you in the next one.